I'm not taken seriously as a filmmaker and that's really the truth of it. I can I can defend myself, I can argue it, I can speak from my heart about what I feel about my work but the truth is I'm not taken seriously by a certain section and now I've learned to live with it. Salman and Shah Rukh were dancing to Bhangra Pale and like Kajal and Rani were dancing to Koi Mil Gaya and Kuch Kuch Hota like every movie star that hit the dance floor there was a song for them. Post my 50th birthday and for the 50th time I'm in conversation with Anupama Chopra on Film Companion. Please subscribe, share, do whatever you can. Karan, it's always so nice to have you on Film Companion. No, it's great to be here. I figured 50 years is a good time to take stock. Mm. Hena? It is. I think it is. I mean, it happened to me when I turned 40 as well. You know, I took some stock then as well. And now 50, well, of course, older and hopefully wiser. And like everything else you do, Karan, turning 50 also created headlines with, <laughs> with a party out of the Great Gatsby. Yeah. Uh, chandeliers and red carpet and bling and then, of course, all the thing about super spreader event. Yes. Tell me, Karan, was it, was it simply that you wanted to turn 50 with the most flamboyant party that you could? I mean, what was it? So it so happened, Anu, it was not how it was meant to be actually. Uh, when I, it was a lot of my, you know, because I think that when I turned 50, it was a very big deal in my own head. Uh, and I had like really created like a big deal about it in my head for many years. Uh, complete self-importance, nothing beyond that. It's just me feeling great that I am turning 50 and how I feel like everyone must take notice of the fact that I've turned 50 because I'm so uh, uh, traumatized about the fact also part of me is and part of me wants to also celebrate it and because I've been in the industry now 27, 28 years I just felt like I really want to do something special so the idea was like I should do something you know somewhere else to make it a destination then nothing was working out schedules were going crazy I was filming in the middle of it all for my own film um, and then it was like Adi had a chat with me and he was like why aren't you doing this at YRF at Yashraj he's saying it all really began for you here. This is like in many ways home and it's... Which it's is my, where we're sitting it now. It is where we're sitting right now at yeah. Yashraj Films and it just felt like... And when he gave me that 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 feeling that that, that is where I should do it, I was like it all fell into place. Yeah. I was like my 50th has to be at Yashraj Films because my anything I know about this movie industry, about the movies, the passion for movies, everything I've learned from this studio, from Yashankal and from Adi and, and literally I felt like there was no better place for me to celebrate my 50th. So then of course my production designer Amrita Apurva, the CEO of my company, Marika who's like who you know is one of our producers at Dharma, everyone just became like part of the, the crew that took care of it. Like they just took care, they said the interiors has to be a set and of course it has to be over the top, dramatic, theatrical, all the above, everything that I'm all about yeah. and unapologetically. So I was so excited Anu about my own party I cannot tell you. Like a child in a candy store, I was like I'm so excited that I'm having this bash and I said it has to be bling because I mean chandelier chic has to be the theme. Of there course. has to be chandeliers on the party, on the dance floor as well as on the ceiling. Like everywhere, there has to be chandeliers everywhere. So people were looking like chandeliers, there were chandeliers and I was loving it all. And I had such a good time at my own party. Like I was just having fun meeting people and I would called all the people I worked with and, and love and have, have like just like feelings of like you've been in touch some like I'm not even seen through the yeah. last two and a half years yeah. but you have that relationship with them it was really like and I and I said like mom you're not invited <laughs> that's the first thing I said mom you're not invited first of all I'm 50 and I live with mommy uh, which in itself is, is well not unusual it's lovely and I love it I, I wouldn't imagine my life without it but I was like mom you're not invited <laughs> because I was like you know maybe I should draw some age <laughs> at which not to sound ages I'm 50 myself, so I can't. But I was like, there has to be, I have to draw a line somewhere. So that was the line I drew. Um, so it was great fun. Everyone was there. And of course, there were the stories and media articles that said that it became a super spread. Now, look, not to get uh, technical about it, but we don't know who contracted it when because there was a lot happening that sure. week, even in the movie industry. There was yeah. not the party, there were weddings, there were events, there were shoots. Why blame me? Like everything, why does it come down to me? Like, I don't mean to sound like a victim, but I do feel. <laughs> Marginally victimized. Whatever happens, it's like, I'm, like, fault. I'm like, I have nothing to do with this pandemic. I just want to put it out there. It's <laughs> not me. Nothing. I have no connection with the beginning and the origin of this pandemic. I just want to put it out there. So, why people wrote what they did, how many people contracted it, did it happen at my party? I'm not saying it. I don't know. Karan, 
So on IMDb, you have 10 credits as a director. Right. Okay, and that includes the three shorts you did for the anthologies, Bombay yeah. Talkies, Ghost Stories, Last, Last Stories, Stories, plus Rocky or Rani Ki Prem Kani, which is the film you're directing now. So you're a very prolific producer, but yeah. as a director, you've taken a long time to incubate, to create. But that's changing now. Yeah. You have said that you want to make seven more movies yeah. before you're 60. You have already announced your next an action yes. film that goes on the floors right after Rocky or Rani releases. Getting stressed while you're saying it, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like, I'm breathing heavily, like I'm getting but, a little hyper. But Karen, what, what, what is changing? Is it just a keener sense of mortality? I think, uh, yes. I think uh, I decided when I turned 50 that what is this decade, what is something that I have to kind of make sure? And I said, what I have to make sure is I have to make many movies. I have to direct many movies, good, bad, ugly, whatever they may be, whatever the outcome is, that who knows. But my endeavor will be to direct many more movies this decade so that when I turn 60 and I have another celebration with the same chandeliers and the same sequence on jackets, I will still feel like I've left behind at least five to seven films in that decade, which I can't say right now. If, if I go in my 40s, um, I have directed two movies. Wow. And that's really that's not enough. That's not enough. Yeah. Uh, not to say that the world is waiting for me or that I, I feel like I'm a filmmaker that people are waiting, you know, with bated breath for what I'm doing. I'm not saying any of that, but I need to do it for myself, right? Because I feel like it's it's like I think just that happiness within and that satisfaction that I get when I'm on a film set mm -hmm. and when I see the execution of a certain vision happen in front of my eyes, that feeling I'm not getting from any other thing that I do. And right. I realized that the most on the sets of Rocky or Rani Ki Prem Kahani because I'm, it's like another feeling of elation and, and celebration when, high, when no? like I, I'm shooting a song right now and it's the 95th time I've done a song where there are many performing artists and dancers and there's a big set and there, you know, it's just like what you call the quintessential big Bollywood item song. I love every minute of it. Like every time I take a shot, every time like Ranveer Singh turns in 48 frames to camera, I'm like, lovely, blow that fan. <laughs> like, you know, like blow that fan, like make them all, like make it all look zingy and like zany and like everything, everything that I grew up and loved. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I don't feel like that part of the cinema that we create has aged at all. Yeah. We do it much lesser now because there's so much more, um, so much more focus on trying to kind of, you know, be, catering to a certain sensibility as well. This film, I'm not saying that I'm not catering to that sensibility, but I'm also having a lot of fun. And that joy is what I want to repeat in this decade. So, speaking of big blowout songs, Karan, there's a very uh, clear through line in terms of aesthetic. Yeah. From Kuch Kuch Hota in 1998 to Jug Jug Ji, or your latest yeah. production, right? You are a lover of the big, yeah. The big thing, right? Yeah. So the big stars, the songs, the beautiful locations. I mean, <laughs> I remember you said to me once, and I think you were only half kidding, that even your cameraman has to be good looking. <laughs> no, I don't say that. <laughs> Did I mean it? I don't know. <laughs> it would be nice to wake up in the morning and the first person you meet on set should be like lovely to look at. Um, aesthetic. I mean, I, aesthetic is the word we'll use because you know, my woke meter keeps going so high when I'm giving any interview now because I'm like, okay, that parlance has to be altered and that terminology Correct. cannot be used anymore. So now I'm not saying, let's not say good looks, let's just, let's call it a thing of beauty. Indeed. And which is, is it lies in the eyes of the beholder. So what's beautiful to me. Uh, but um, uh, there's enough beauty. Around. There, no, so here's my question, right? Whenever, of course, the other great connoisseur of beauty in Hindi cinema is Sanjay Leela Bansari, yes. right? Uh, and whenever I've talked to him about this, he's always sort of traced it back to a childhood of deprivation. He always says that because they weren't colours, there wasn't the lights and that just outsized kind of staggering loveliness, he wants to constantly create it now. Uh, is there a backstory for your kind of passion for all things pretty? You know, I know I would love to intellectualize this answer and give you something that would track back to my childhood and maybe subconsciously it can be. Yeah. I just love Hindi cinema. I grew up loving Hindi cinema. When VHS was introduced when I was 9 or 10 years old and I could watch the movies where I had heard all the songs growing up with my mom. She was a big listener of all the Guru Dutt songs, Mohammad Rafi, Kishor Kumar, Lata Ji, Asha Ji, you know, S.T. Barman, R.D. Barman. Like I used to grew up hearing all these songs. So when VHS came, I wanted to put visuals to those songs I'd heard. Like I at 10 wanted to see Pyasa. Mm -hmm. 
Right. I wanted to see Kagas Ke Phool. I wanted to see those movies because I'd heard all. I wanted to see how did they perform Vakt Ne Kia, Kya Hasi Sitam. So I just grew up loving cinema, Hindi cinema at that time, because mm-hmm. it was just the only cinema I was exposed to. And while everyone in my, in I grew up in um, a very affluent neighborhood called Malabar Hill, where no, where it wasn't cool to watch Hindi yeah. films, talk about it, go to the cinema and watch it. But I didn't care because I was like, I love this cinema. I love it. I used to dance in my bedroom to Bollywood songs. I was obsessed with Rishi Kapoor. I wanted his sweaters that he wore in the movies. I was performing to all the dance steps alone in my room in front of my mirror, and I did it unabashedly and unapologetically. All I loved was Hindi cinema. When I used to go and watch a film, Anu, and the censor certificate came out, and if it was a 15-reel film, I would feel sad. My heart would sink. But if it was 23 reels, in the censor certificate, you could read the reels yeah, in those days. Yeah, yeah. I would be like, yay, it's 23 reels, it's longer. There was no such thing as a film I did not love. Mm-hmm. There was no such thing as a film I did not enjoy. The longer the film, the better. There were trial shows, which we now know as previews. Correct. I used to wait from the morning off that day. What time will I reach that preview theater, mm. watch that film, and just, just sink into my, and just get into that world. It didn't matter who was in the movie, who made the movie, how good or bad it may have been in retrospect. I loved it. That's the feeling, really, that, that I have always brought to the cinema I have created. I love everything about the tropes of Bollywood that we know them as, the big songs, the movie stars, the glamour, the glitter, the, the energy of those song and dance sequences. Of course, one has tried to evolve that with time and mm. give it some plausibility and sensibility, which is really tough because uh, some of it just comes from a place of abandon. Yeah. There's no logic to yeah. why Ranveer Singh is dancing at an event right now. There's no logic why I'm shooting a song in Vienna where Alia is going to be wearing beautiful jackets and Ranveer is going to be singing behind her and she's going to pretend she didn't see him. You know. So there's no logic to any of this. And I don't want to give you the logic. I want to show you my abandon. So I understand where Sanjay comes from when he says this. I'm not quite sure what I can track back to, but Mm. I can definitely track it back to my memories of just loving Hindi cinema when I was eight, nine, 10, and then beyond. But you know, that's the other thing about, about coming back to your party, because it was so amazing that all these people in these stunning gowns on this red carpet to rival Cannes, right? But Eventually, you're all dancing to Dafliwan. Of course. <laughs> I love it. I mean, it. it is what I, I, I like, Do you know what my kids' present to me was? What? They're five and a half and they know how obsessed I am to Dafli Wale. So, Dafli Wale goes back to me and my childhood. Hmm. When I watched Sargam in a preview theatre, I became obsessed with that film. And as a child, I don't think my father even realised uh, that he kept asking me to dance to Dafli Bali, but I wasn't doing the Rishi Kapoor step. I was doing the Jaya Pradha step. Right. And he was, he was fine with it. Hmm. He was fine that his son was performing to those dance steps every day in his living room. And he would make me do it in front of his friends. And I would do it with great fun. And everyone sang along and danced along. And they celebrated my excitement for that. Yeah. That song is a big part of my childhood. I love and I'm obsessed with that song. When I recently did a reality show, and Jaya Pradha came on set and we did Dafri Wali together and I hugged her tight and I said, you have no idea what this moment means to me. You have no idea. It was Jaya Pradha in Dafri Wali, then it was Sri Devi in Kate Nahi Katte. And I, the, I performed this Anu on my own. I loved, so when my children uh, wanted to give me a present, I don't know who suggested it to them. They actually rehearsed on the steps of Dafri Wali and they made me sit down and I had tears coming down from my eyes because I had my two children who had made such an effort. They had a dance teacher who had taught them this and they had performed to Dafle Wale. Of course, with steps they had completely forgotten and <laughs> beats that were off, but the love was intact. So, so it's sort I mean, of going eventually, even had this song. So let me tell you about, about the DJ element at Pi Party. Hmm. Handled completely, controlled, handled and with his heart, Ranveer Singh was in charge of the music. He was like, the movie star comes on the dance floor and we play their song. You have to be. So he and DJ Ganesh were like at it. They literally, he did a tech check, Anu. He did a tech check. The party was like way down at like 10, 11 at night, people were coming. He was there at 4 p.m. at Yashraj doing a tech check for sound. He had gone and rehearsed the Duffley Wale item. He had made them make those, the, those Correct, the, shi- dub, the, the, the shiny Duffley, yeah. the glittery, because he mm. wanted it out. He had mm. rehearsed it and, and it was a big surprise for me. I had no idea any of this was happening. They created a mix. Right. They played it. 
and it was a, he was in charge of the music he was like this has to be like the om shanti om dance number the naseeb <laughs> like movie stars on the dance floor and play their songs like so it was like literally <laughs> salman and shahrukh were dancing to bhangra pale and like kajal and rani were dancing to koi mil gaya and kuch kuch hota like every movie star that hit the dance floor there was a song for them and he was ready he was only on the cons- dj console that's all he did so he, i have to be very very immensely grateful for him actually he controlled so the music came straight from him and he's like yaar we are not playing any of this house and lounge and cool and techno and rock huh. and we are playing bollywood because Full that's what me. because that's what i am i unapologetically <laughs> love it how can i have any other music at my party but okay tell me this karan and tell me honestly when something like this happens when you have ranveer doing your music when you have every star of any note on that floor is there a sense of power is there a sense of this is a show of strength i am the sort of uncrowned king of bollywood No, not at no, all. No, I mean not at all. I mean like I, I, I can I really be honest? And I yeah. swear, on my life, it's a lot of gratitude, mm-hmm. and also things I may have done right. I'm like I've obviously built these relationships. Of course. And I'm like I'm really proud that my upbringing made me do that. Mm-hmm. Like it made me understand that I don't need to be mo- friends with you only if I'm working with you. Yeah. Simple concept which nobody in this industry really follows. Yeah. I'm in touch with all actors. whether i'm in working with them or not there's a connection you make a connection you have to further that with a communication mm-hmm. and further that with really some emotion otherwise how can you invest with somebody work so closely with them and go sep- your separate ways right after the film is over but that's the nature of the business that that's what everyone does that is the nature of the business but i don't do that anymore Mm. I don't do that it's not something it's not in my DNA so what I what was happening in front of me was a lot of celebration and for me a lot of gratitude that I've done what my father would have liked me to be I I'm 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 trying to be the person that he would like his son to have been is in touch with the fraternity close enough and of course there are people who don't like me and there are people i don't like sure. uh i'm human and i'm no way i'm not some saintly person who's loving everybody there are people i can't stand and there are people who can't stand me and that that is going to happen mm-hmm. but more or less i've tried my level best to kind of live up to the relationships that that actually began on a certain emotional note and then i didn't want to let go so if i worked with somebody in 1998 they're still in my life today you know uh there are relationships you i am not i haven't it's not that sharuk and i work together as yeah. actor and years. director since 12 years yeah. who is the closest to me in this business he is his mm-hmm. family is my family so it's like i don't think it's about the work mm-hmm. it's about how you can nurture those relationships and i believe i've done that that to me is not power it's a victory it's yeah. an emotional victory yeah Speaking of Sharukh, um, Karan, you and Adi were really sort of key architects of the sort of Sharukh Khan phenomenon, yeah. and you, more than I think most filmmakers, have had a really sort of front row seat to stardom and the evolution of stardom in Hindi cinema. How much has it changed? What stardom? Yeah, there is no stardom. Abhi nahi hai. Kya hai? Really? There is some. Uh, there may be. There is a, a, a popularity. Hmm. But is what's the difference? St- it's a big difference. Tell me. The magnetism, the mystery, mystique, aura. I don't think this generation has it. Mm-hmm. I think they are wonderful artists, but do they have that magic and mystery that I grew up when I grew up and I I was at a party and Mr. Bachchan walked in, Mr. Dilip Kumar walked in, Mr. Shah Rukh Khan walked in. It was like head turning. I've seen it. Yeah. Aura, like everybody, like literally is feeling the presence of that was power. Yeah. That was stardom. Yeah. That was glory. Today. everybody is much easier it's also the generation that is easier more casual more accessible more available mm. on a daily basis i'm swiping you on my instagram i'm like liking disliking you i know which gym you go to i know which pilates class you go to i know what you eat i know who you meet i know what you do i know everything about you how can there be any mystery attached there is so when sharukh khan even walked into my party you could feel there was a thumping energy with the younger generation yeah. it's like you know that sharukh khan is sharukh khan because there is that aura i mean that that kingdom that he has and that feeling of that kingliness that he got yeah. it's true it's true if he walked in right now you would feel his energy and even if you didn't see him correct 
That doesn't happen with this generation. It's, it's that not, Jaya Bachchan from K3G, you right? You can just send Shah Rukh, of <laughs> course. Just send like, it, I'm telling you, everyone felt it. So Shah Rukh was the only one who didn't walk the red carpet. He hmm. came from the other side. So, But when he walked in and he was in the party, I could see whether it was a younger movie. It was as young as maybe Ananya Pandey, right up to his peers. Everybody felt the aura. That is stardom. Yeah. What are you telling me about a feeling of, it's all nothing. So is that over? Are we done with I, that? I don't, I don't think there's going to be that kind of stardom anymore. I'm not saying it's a wrong or a right thing. Sure. I'm like, it doesn't exist. Yeah. I'm not saying that that's something that I'm going to miss or the world will miss. Maybe the concept of stardom is just going to be this mm -hmm. because we're in a world of active social media and there is not going to be such a thing mm -hmm. as manic stardom because you know, we are, everyone as I said is so accessible. It's the way it is but I don't think it's going to ever be like it was. Really? Yeah. I don't think we have it. Like when I meet a movie star, like even when I when I meet Rekha Ji at an event, yeah. I mean, like there is something like time just stops around her, and you feel like you know you're you're meeting. Even she'll be wearing her beautiful sari with Correct. her gorgeous children. You'll be like movie star, <laughs> like you know lights, arc lights, yes. like 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 big silver screen magic. Like it'll yeah. all come back, memories, nostalgia. Yeah. Do I feel that when I meet anyone from this generation? No, but I love them. Correct. Then, I think some of the finest actors we have mm -hmm. are in this generation today, brilliant artists. But that magic and aura, I don't know. I'm not mm -hmm. sure about that. Karan, your cinema is by design uh, accessible. Yeah. It's crowd pleasing. Uh, it's You want it to appeal to a wide audience, right? But through this, you've also slipped in subversive ideas. Yeah. You know, you did bring gay characters into the mainstream. You talked about infidelity, you talked about the female orgasm with Kiara and yeah. the vibrator and yeah. love stories. Do you feel, Karan, that if you were more formally inventive, if your craft was um, more groundbreaking, that people would recognize the other things you've done? Nobody is recognizing it because so much else takes over. This party takes over, right? Mm. You're, you also began asking me about my party. Sure. You didn't ask me about my short film. So that's who I am and that I've learned to live with. Um, the, 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 the trappings around me always take over. The seriousness which I might have or might not have, it's, it's a separate issue. I'm not taken seriously as a filmmaker and that's really the truth of it. I can, I can defend myself, I can argue it, I can speak from my heart about what I feel about my work but the truth is I'm not taken seriously by a certain section and now I've learned to live with it. It's fine. It's what I am. If I, when I, I feel there's a grudging approach to even praising me when I do something different. I'm like, it's like mar mar ke tarif niklegi, mar mar ke. You know, they will be like, they will be like, you know, like maybe this just happened. It's not really him. Or they'll be like, if this is him, then what, what is he doing in the rest of the work he creates? I don't know if I'm good or bad anymore. It's just like, I want to do what makes me happy. When I told love stories, it was a story that I wanted to tell. It was a script that came through me from a very bright writer and I was like, Completely, and when I thought of the idea of playing the track of Kabi Kushi Kabi Gum over the orgasm, uh, I was like, "It's great." It's yeah. not that I'm feeling like I, I feel like there's a, there, uh, there's a subvertive kind of like way of kind of like making fun of your own self, which is self-deprecating and, and and gorgeous. I think, yeah. um, rightfully, even when I did Bombay Talkies and talked about repressed sexuality in a marriage, I would I talked about infidelity, you know, in a film. I, I mean. Even a film like My Name is Khan, which I, I tried to attempt about, you know, about the social fabric uh, and uh, where we live and how we operate. I don't think I got enough credit for doing any of that. I'm still asked on red carpets and events about, oh, you make these beautiful, grand, lovely films. I'm like, I've also made other stuff, but like, I don't think I will ever get acknowledged for that. And I've learned to be okay with it. I'm not saying that I'm bitter about it anymore. There was a phase that I was like, yeah, I really want critical acceptance. Because I feel like I'm also beyond what people see. Like I feel there is a part of me as a filmmaker that I'm not getting enough credit for. Mm. And that used to bother me at one point. Honestly, it doesn't bother me anymore. Like I don't seek that validation and maybe it's like a load off my chest. And you might see it in Rocky Arani. It's like a load off my chest film. It's really going back to the basics with of course the syntax of today. Mm. But it's really celebrating everything I grew up watching and I don't care anymore. When I made my name is Khan, I wanted to win an award. Mm. When, I, when I made Last Stories I wanted, and uh, Bombay Talkies, I wanted to be part of a group of very celebrated, critically acclaimed filmmakers and I wanted to belong. I had all these feelings. It came from insecurities. I don't have them anymore today, fortunately. But Karan, you've 
also said yourself that I haven't made that sort of groundbreaking film, yeah. right? That I haven't made the Dil Chata hai or no. the Lagan. It's just no. not there in my filmography. So why do you think that is? Have you been too timid as a storyteller? No, I've been a producer also. I also run a studio and a tentpole So you mean when film. you're directing, you're thinking too much like a producer? Yes, I am. I, because it becomes a tentpole film for the company. I haven't yet mm -hmm. been able to detach myself from my the studio that I run. Mm -hmm. Like where, oh, I'll just do this and no one will care. I'm like, no, my film is a tentpole film. There is an expectation of monies and recoveries and the business that this film needs to do. There is that thinking. Yeah. I have to balance that commerce with the art. And that's what I, I, I feel like that's where sometimes perhaps the ability to creatively breathe doesn't happen because there is also a balancing act. Oh, there has to be music because I'm getting that much for music. Oh, the film has to be wider. It has to work in, in the diaspora as well. It has to work everywhere. So how do I plan that experience? Because I'm going to spend this much. I need to recover this much. There's a mathematic that happens along with it. So it's easy for people to turn around and say, but you can do what you want to. But I don't want to. I want my film to be the tentpole film for my company and my studio. And but I need but that to you're work. limiting yourself. I don't know if it's limiting. I also enjoy the, what I do. So mm. it's not like I'm dying to kind of tell a story which I haven't been able to. Mm. Maybe in life, and now there's also dramatic entertainment that allows me to breathe digitally. And maybe I will, you know, tell a different story. I keep saying that, you know, I want to I do a show like this. I, I haven't been able to get down to doing it. But a lot of my thinking for when I've created content has also my thinking, honestly, and I want to say this, it's not something that, um, that I'm hiding as well. There is definitely a producer hat that, that also comes in play. And that, you use the word limiting, but I, I, I use the word catering. I'm mm -hmm. catering to my, to my company and what I need to do for it. And I've never done anything I haven't enjoyed. Like I've enjoyed making Kabhi Khushi Kabhi Gam as much as I did the short in Bombay Tokis. I've had great fun on both sets. It's because I'm telling a story in the way. But when I do make a big theatrical experience, I, ha I do think of various other factors. And I'd be lying if I said I don't. Mm. Tell me, um, there's been so much hand-wringing in the last couple of months about the South and the rise of the South and, yeah. and what's wrong with Hindi cinema, right? Now, a hypothesis I have is that one of the things that is hobbling Hindi cinema is also the sort of industrial strength vanity. Yeah. that is a part of this business. Vanity is a part of showbiz everywhere. But I think in this ecosystem, with the paid news, with the sort of projection constantly on social media, with the sort of head-turning salaries for stars, uh, it seems to have kind of gone into another yes. level. And that has finally become a big hurdle to get past because everyone's pitching themselves as a brand rather than an artist. Mm. Would you agree with this hypothesis? Uh, partially, I think that, you know, the, that we're victims of, of the very things that we should run away from is like this, all this, whether it's like paid PR, it's media blades, it's projections, perceptions, all of that, I agree with, with that, that, that is plaguing us yeah. in, in various ways. But also, I think we don't have the conviction. There's a, we are victims of herd mentality. It's like suddenly, I think... What happened in Telugu cinema, you know, predominantly if you go by now, uh, Kannada cinema has given us this massive hit with KGF. Um, Telugu cinema and now with KGF, um, Tamil cinema and, and Malayalam have always been story heavy, content heavy, etc. They've always told stories, they've been, you know, they've also been commercial, they've also been aesthetic. Yeah. A lot of that has, has happened. Telugu's been hugely mainstream, a big audience, and now KGF has broken all records yeah. with the first Kannada global film, like, you know, which has been made. What I think is common, and I've worked with all, so it's strange, but I've been at the launch of Bahubali 1, Bahubali 2, at the launch of RRR, at the launch of KGF. I've been at all these launch events and 2.0. Uh, the big theatrical, I've been at all the launch. I've in fact hosted every one of these, and I'm very proud about that fact. Because I've been in touch with filmmakers from the South, actors from the South for a very long time. I think, I think I'm happy to report that I saw this this creative, mad, crazy blitz and energy much before anybody else in my industry did. And yeah. that I would like to say, mm. that that is true. And, mm. I'm, I'm, and I'm happy about that and proud of it as well. I saw it, not because I'm proud because I had anything to do with that genius that they created. I have nothing to do with Bahubali. But you were there. Uh, but I was there. I was right. part of the party. Yeah. I was part of the party. But I think what I feel in common is they have a lot of conviction mm. and they don't listen to other things. They just follow their conviction. They know what they're doing. They do it. They're not seeking acceptance, validation, approval, wanting to create. 
they are so confident in their skin. They are so convinced with what they're doing. And I think that's what we all lack. In our cinema, we don't have conviction. Suddenly, if biopics are doing well, then everybody will make a biopic. Suddenly, now everyone's woken up to the syntax of, of, of the southern cinema, and now we want to suddenly start doing that. We are, it's, what, what were we? Yeah. We made certain movies with certain amount of love and conviction that the 70s saw, the 80s saw. I'm talking about in recent memory, the 90s, even when we did love stories with Abandon. We stopped all of that because suddenly 2001, Lagan and Dil Chatai came and we were like, we want to also be walking uh, 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 and being nominated at the Academy Award. That was true to those films. Those were great films. You will not perhaps be able to do it again, so why should you try? In fact, that's what I respect about a filmmaker like Sanjay Leela Bansali. I'm like, he sticks to what he loves yeah. and he is never... And when he did deviate, which he had, those didn't work out for him. Yeah. But whenever he stuck to what he's passionate about, he's never gone wrong. And I love that about him, as I do about any filmmaker who stuck their ground. Mm -hmm. But a lot of filmmakers, and I have to say, including myself, we get carried away. We get carried away with where the wind is blowing. And I've done it myself. Like, at one point in time, suddenly when I saw these movies doing well, and I was like, I need to make a... Which ones? Uh, my name is Khan. When I made huh, it, huh. I was like, I want to win an award. I want critical acceptance. I want four stars on my review. Like, this is what's going to matter. It's not about the business. It's about the, the aesthetic, and it's about the critical acceptance. I've done that myself. Suddenly, when I, when I was in neither here nor there situation after that film, I was like, let me go back and make student of the year. <laughs> like, it was like, it was crazy. Like, I've done all kinds of things in my head. I feel like what they have is conviction and what we lack is exactly that. Mm. And I feel all the rest that you're talking about are peripheral problems. Mm. Our main thing is we don't have conviction. So how will this come? It will have to come. It will have to happen. <laughs> otherwise, <laughs> otherwise we're screwed. I mean like, look what's happening. I mean like we need to up our storytelling. We need to empower writers. We need to go back to basics. Mm. basic love for cinema, conviction of Indian cinema. We need to stop trying to be somebody else. You know, we need to stop appealing to who we can't appeal to. If you are Anurag Kashyap, you know this is your strength, you will do that. If you are SS Rajamal, you know what you need to do. You need to know what you're capable of. You don't want to become a buffet when you are a bona fide a la carte. You know, why <laughs> yes. do you want to do everything? Why you don't have, and you have to go back to good old fashioned conviction. That's yeah. all I tell any filmmaker, actor included. I feel actors are like meandering, doing whatever, wherever the wind is blowing, they're trying to go with it. Oh, action is working now. We all want to do action films, including me who wants to direct one. So I'm like, we're all so, so idiotically unconvinced about our strengths and weaknesses right. that we just tend to be all over the place. Yeah. And I think that's when I meet. Uh, S.S. Rajamoli, when I meet Shankar sir and I meet, when I, when I, when I, I met uh, Prashant Neel who's directed KGF and I meet the producers, they just know what they are doing mm -hmm. and they don't care what anybody else has to say. And then I feel when I read the reviews of KGF and I'm like, if we made this film, we would be lynched. But here everybody's like, oh, it was a celebration, a party and, and, and it was, I loved it. I loved it with all my heart. But I'm like, hum ye banate to hat. So I'm like, it's also working both ways. I feel we are also not given any kind of leeway. And also we are then trying to be somebody else. So we are all over the place. So we are living a dual existence and we have to stop. Do you have any regrets, Karam? Is there anything you wish you had done differently? I wish I'd focused on my personal life a little more. I don't think I have done that. I mean, as a parent, I feel very fulfilled today. And thank God I took that step. And I think I took that step five years too late. Mm -hmm. I wish I'd done that even earlier. But I feel like in all this relationship building, producer building, studio building, I let myself and my personal life mm -hmm. take a back seat. Um, as I did, like, like I talked about it professionally as a director, but I think the bigger regret I have is that I didn't, I didn't give that part of my life um, the importance that I think that it deserved at a certain point of time, and now I think it might be too late. No. I mean, that's you saying that with empathy, but I'm saying that with reality. And like, I think it's perhaps too late for me to now find a life partner and, you know, go to the mountains for a quiet holiday with, uh, or kind of have someone hold my hand at times Your of trauma. quiet holiday will also make headlines, you <laughs> so, know I mean, that. Knowing my luck, yeah, somebody <laughs> will pop out of that mountain and like have an image uh, <laughs> to kind of, kind of like, you know, kind of like haunt me with. But uh, I feel like that life partner situation that someone to hold your hand at times of trials and tribulations, mm. you know, because I think that what I think a life partner does for you, like a partner, 
in, in love and in like, you know, you're in a marriage, you know what I mean, you have kids um, and you're a unit. Like, I think a parent, a child can never fulfill that aspect. Mm -hmm. that, I think that is reserved for your soulmate, your life partner, your relationship of romance, whatever it might be. Uh, I don't have that. That's a vacant spot in my life and that's my deepest regret. Hopefully temporarily. Well, you never know. <laughs> you never know. Never say never. Okay, I'm almost at the end. I, last time we talked, Karan, you said to me that I tell everyone my age that you have to work towards being relevant. And you said that's your biggest fear, is that you won't be relevant. Yeah. So, Karan, are you afraid of a time when people won't talk about you? Yes. Really? Yeah. Why? Traumatized by Why? I don't know. I don't like indifference. I'm okay with hate. Um, I'm okay with, of course, I'm okay with love. I'm not okay with indifference. I don't, I don't mind that, that that you are absolutely trolling or hating me. But if you're not talking about me, it's going to bother me. I know it's going to bother me. I don't have any other answer to give you. It's going to bother me. Relevance is an indifference. Uh, so relevance in work. So I have to kind of move with the times and kind of understand the climate and the, you know, the, like the infrastructure of our times also to kind of build the relevance here, younger, more sensible, more plausible Stay connected voices. with the Stay audience. Stay connected with mm. your audience. Stay connected with the stories of your times, the music of your times, the people, the syntax, everything. That's one thing. Personally also, I want to also be talked about for whatever I do. Like if I'm throwing this party and you're not going to ask me this question, I'm like, why did I throw it? Like I, of course, want to be like talked about. I don't want your indifference. I don't mind about, as I said, I don't mind your extreme reaction to me. That's the one thing that I don't know how I'll deal with. Um, uh, I've spent 28 years being talked about and I would like to spend, I mean, I feel if I can manage that to a really push it to as much as I can, uh, I'd be very grateful. Uh, that's all I can say because I don't want people to not talk about me. That would be heartbreaking. I can see you in a blinky coat at the 90th. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, oh, completely. Pink, no less. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last question. You know, I first interviewed you in 2001. Oh, just before K3G released. Okay. Okay, I came to your office and for that same, I did this piece for India Today magazine. Yeah. And for the same piece, I had interviewed your mom. Um, and she said to me that, you know, he was such an introvert, such a pallu ke piche child. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. the descriptor yeah. she used, that I couldn't believe he was going to direct a film. Yeah. So, Karan, all these years later, is that introvert, is that pallu ke piche person somewhere in there, or have you changed completely? No, you know, so no one believes it and I'm going to say this with a straight face and I don't know if you're going to buy it and I don't know if anyone's going to buy it and frankly now what can I do about it. I still am really slightly shy. <laughs> I, 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 I'm I so sorry for laughing in your face. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, you can. <laughs> and that's what I said. I'm absolutely expecting this reaction and I get it from anyone I say it to. I said even now when I walk into a party, I'll go alone because I've learned to do that because I'm like, I don't want any of people around me for any kind of security but I'm awkward till I put on that role so what I can do because I'm Gemini and you get two for the price of one one part of me is a shy introvert still and you're never going to believe this but it is true to me but that one part is a complete actor I can put up a show I will put up a show and you will never know that I'm acting but Part of me might be that I'm awkward. So when I'm meeting anyone for the first time, there will initially be my, my, my will to please you. So I will put up that show. But part of me might be like, actually, I don't know what I'm doing here. Like I'm a little like awkward about it. Mm. So that paluke piche child and that shy kid is somewhere still around in the vicinity. But there's a lot of performance that has come on top of it now. Uh, so who am I really happens when I go home and I say goodnight to my mom and I know my kids are asleep and I go into my room and I get into my shorts and I wear my t-shirt and go to my kambal and I watched and I, I replied to message having my thoughts, sometimes staring in the ceiling, sometimes watching content, sometimes reading. That is who I really am. Those four hours that I give myself in literally the solitude of my room because I don't have a partner, I'm not in a relationship, a lot of that solo time is where I've become that, that kid that I was. That, and, that and, person. And, that, and I enjoy my own company a lot more now than I used to because it used to make me deeply insecure earlier because I felt like I needed to be everywhere. 
Now with age, I'm like, I'm really happy when I can spend those four hours with myself. And many a time I've done that and I've enjoyed every bit of the silence in my room because there is so much noise around me otherwise. Yeah, there is, there is. And that noise, Karan, is only going to get louder since you are shooting season seven of Coffee yeah. with Karan. Oh dear. You're stirring up the pot again. Well, uh, can I tell you what I'm saying uh, in my campaign? I'm saying, screw it, I'm still going to brew it. <laughs> <laughs> I know you said that you have no sense of power when, when all of these people are there yeah, at your birthday, yeah. right? Is there a little bit, teeny weeny sense of power when all of them are on your couch saying things they probably shouldn't be? But that's changing, Anu. They are all so guarded. I'm shooting my seventh season. I have to like yank it out now. Like I'm like, it's used to be no so No one's much messing easier. up? <laughs> no, everyone's so like, will you ask me about this? Will you don't ask me about this? Don't say this. Can you cut that out? I'm like, I'm like, what's going on? Like what happened to candor? What happened to good old fashioned, like casual repartee in an interview? In Coffee with Karan for that matter, when I was watching, you know, we were making a mashup of all the seasons mm -hmm. and I was watching it. Like I've literally seen myself age on those yeah. seasons, you know, cause yeah. it's like, I remember you messaging me when we put out that little bit of like that gimmick saying that Coffee with Karan is I not so returning. Sad. It's I not was returning. so sad. And I was like, I, People were so much easier on that couch. Like it was so easy. Now everyone is so worried because like suddenly they'll know that everything will become a headline. It'll be sensationalized. I've got cricketers into trouble for crying out loud. I have nothing to do with cricket and I managed even that. So people can get really scared. So I'm finding like everybody like, you know, there are people like Ranbir Kapoor has told me I'm not coming on your show. He's like, yeah, yeah, I have to pay the price for it for too long. Why should I do this to myself? He said, I love you. I'll meet you in your house and talk to you. You give me coffee at home. I'm not coming to your couch. So I'm like, I've also had that, you know, happens. And I'm like, and I've laughed out loudly because he said, he said, please, he said, he said, he said, like Ranveer was like, when he saw, he said, Karan, show me the edit, you know, because you, you can build public perception on the basis of that Correct. performance on that couch. And I'm like, why are you taking it so seriously? <laughs> it's just a silly, frivolous talk show. I mean, let's not give it anything else. I mean, I know others have said it themselves. They call it that. It is that only. That I'm not breaking any boundaries with that show. I'm not talking about anything intensely cerebral. We're having just tuppish conversation and that's why it's everyone's guilty pleasure because people like to watch frivolous. It's, yeah, it's, it's what you call the quintessential cringe binge. You may cringe but you will still binge it. <laughs> well, I can't wait to see it, Karan. Thank you. I look forward to showing it to you <laughs> on the 7th of July. <laughs> Good plug. Yeah, Nicely yeah. done. Yes. Nicely done. Karan, thank you so much. Thanks, and and uh, you know, happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>